My father was professor of soil physics, just around the corner from soil physics in the agronomy building was climatology, including uh, the state climatologist. Not a, just the university was honored to give him a free office there just to get the state climatologist on the campus of, of the university. And so I got to know those guys uh, very well. And I had a little, I manufactured a, a soil moisture uh, measuring uh, device you can put down the soil at different depths and then you get the impedance through them and that will tell you the amount of moisture at different levels. And they said, the university hired you to make those? And I said, no, they didn't want to do that. They said the thing like this would have to carry its own weight. Good grief. Talk about carrying its own weight. The, that by the end of three months, I was being paid more, I think, than any university uh, professor <laughs> and on the things I sold. Carolyn was... Uh, first, my... That's, we were we went all through high school together. We both played flutes, so we sat next to each other. How many flutes did we have? Six or seven? Seven. Anyway, we were the two that sat next to each other, and my uh, my dad was real concerned about. Uh, she was my dad's secretary, but he didn't feel real comfortable about that because what if they find out that my my son's girlfriend is my secretary. <laughs> anyway, we, we got here without being, no, nobody was put in jail. I was with the National Weather Service at Auburn. I had to take care of all of the federal weather stations for Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. I was responsible for all of them and their upkeep. One of the upkeep uh, devices uh, turned out to be on the farm of an important person. Here came uh, the farmer that owned the land, and he was very interested in the weather station. And so I was talking to him, and the the bodyguards of the guy that owned the land the weather station was on realized, where's the president? What were you talking to President Carter about? <laughs> so, his weather station. He was just it was his weather station. He was great, really proud of this weather station. And he saw that I was out there taking care of it because that was my job. I was always impressed with the Iowa State. And the, my federal job was getting worse and worse. It was just miserable. My mother knew it was miserable. And my mother was the dean's assistant at uh, Utah State, and this was down in Auburn. But she knew, I was, she knew I was miserable. And so she called me and told me that there was a, a position that she thinks I'd like. Here. Uh, she was at Utah State, but she knew it was here on this campus. And so I called. And yes, they liked me to come. And yes, could I come on the, the, over the phone? And yes, so I came here and interviewed for the job and got the job. And then when I got the job, they asked me. They said, we've got a real, a real question that bothers us. How did you find out about this job? And I said, my mother told me. <laughs> I told a lot of people that they'd probably never meet another person that moved to Iowa for the weather. Right. Everything that a climatologist loves is, is in Iowa. And uh, from 
the west to the east, Omaha, uh, going uh, east, it's, it's just delightful. Uh, you can see the change, and the change goes. You go up the river from the uh, eastern border, eastern river, as you go up the river, you can see the climate changing, and then when you get up to Iowa City area, then cut across here to Ames, and you've got a, a terrific situation. The extreme south of Iowa was an interest to me because uh, my great-grandmother had walked from southeast Iowa to the state of Utah. On foot. On foot. Wow. You know... You can't find people finer than I was in this state. And they hired me as extension climatologist. That is, go out and visit all the counties. Oh, what a delight. And uh, they're just not finer, finer people in this world than Iowa farmers. And they... They seemed happy to have a climatologist that was working for the farmers. And I don't, I don't know how many talks I gave per year to farmers around the state, but it wasn't a small number. And the farmers seemed to appreciate it. The, the climate here, one person said, the climate's changing. And I said, yes, it is. The climate is changing. And they kind of smiled. I said, the climate has always changed. The climate will always change. The question is, how much and how fast?